Hello and welcome back to Let's Try. We're trying Maho Kenshi. This is uh, another game published by Iceberg Interactive and they, they, ha they seem to have a really good track record for finding some out there uh, concepts and uh, I'm, I've been really looking forward to this. Um, this is the demo and it is early access. It's like early before early access and um, it's going to be a tactics based deck builder. Yes, we're doing another deck builder, but I've been excited for this one because it looks like it's trying to shake up the format uh, quite a bit. Um, primarily and first and foremost with some of its theming. It, it does some cool kind of uh, Japanese myth stuff that I, I think it looks really novel. Um, so I am doing this blind, so I'll be, I'll be capturing some of the learning process as well as some of my first impressions. In the most remote islands of the celestial realm, rumors of rebels and uprisings are common. But more recent rumors speak of dark forces and villages being destroyed. You have been sent to investigate. Okay. In the most remote islands of this, uh, uh, I was just wondering if we'd already just heard this. In the most remote islands of the Celestial Realm, rumors of rebels and uprisings are common, but most more recent rumors speak of darker forces and disappearing villagers. You've been sent to... You, we just we just, we just, just heard that. I didn't need to read that. All right. Right-click a tile to preview your travel path. So, I mean, um, when I saw the, the, the reveal trailer for this game, I was like, wow, this already looks really cool. Um, we got this kind of, like neat um like overworld map these like floating islands and stuff we've got some we've got some uh hex based tactics which I, i'm always a, a pretty big fan of and we've got uh, we'll have some deck building elements later so here we can see our preview this is a, i don't know one two three four right click again to start traveling we'll do it ending your turn refills your energy click the end turn button all right there's an event a few tiles ahead of you. Events are unique stories where you can make choices that impact your rewards. Stop on a tile containing a scroll. Oh. All right. So this is a this is a pretty standard um, thing you'll find in a deck builder a game like this. Is you're gonna you're gonna come across these kind of story based events and then have to make a choice. Although we only seem to have the one choice. I'm assuming this is almost like uh, the beginning, uh, where we we're, we're just kind of getting our stuff started. Um, gigantic monolith towers over a clearing. At its foot, a lonely figure smiles and beckons you closer. You'll have to forgive me. I am going to skip some of the flavor text. Um, this order is tasked with guarding the ancestral gateways between the islands. For more, most people, these portals are the only way to safely travel from island to island. It is unusual to encounter one alone. Um, tread carefully. Maho Kenshi for the Celestial Islands are no longer the haven of the peace they were. They once were. Thank you for the warning. I will be on my guard and gain cards. You gain two safe travel cards. So here we are, dash one tile. Dashing ignores terrain travel costs. Um, almost like when I when I saw the trailer for this game, kind of got some Mage Knight vibes from it. If anyone's familiar with Mage Knight, um, you, if you want to know more about it, you should ch check out my Oath Keeper, I think it is. Uh, let's try. And you can see a very uh, accurate depiction of, of uh, Mage Knight. Drag and drop cards on the desired tiles or character to play them. So we can drag it and then move. And we got our dash. And I'm assuming since this is a mountain, uh, this would have cost us more travel time maybe. Tiles have different energy costs and grant different defense and strength bonuses. Hover over a tile for more details. So this has plus two attack plus four defense. I think this means maybe if we're on the tile, yeah, like we can see here, our strength is increased and so is our defense. So we get um, benefits from being on certain tiles. Uh, let's go ahead and move forward. The forest is gonna grant us four defense tiles. This is more mountain. What is this hill? That gives us extra attack. So we've got a lot of positioning tactics just right away. Let's go to our next event here. As you're about to cross the bridge, you sense a hostile presence in front of you. A lone man stands in your way blocking the bridge. This is a perfect warm-up for you. Charge him, gain strength and cards. You gain four strike cards, you gain four strength this turn. You might be wondering, where, where's the combat? Oh, well, I mean, here here it is. 
Um, combat in this game is not really, as I understand, not really in the form of like your standard kind of deck builder, like turn based. It is and it is it is and it isn't. It's it's like trying to kind of marry um, both the uh, hex based tactics as well as um, your your dealing cards. So uh, right now we're just gonna do our attack. We only had the one energy energy left. So actually it might have been a better idea to move away from them, but they're about to do two attack. We have the tactical advantage because we're in the forest. So we'll see if they do some damage to us. They did a little bit of damage to us. Um, now, I don't, I'm not sure why we're doing less damage now, but we are doing less damage. We only did one damage to them. We can attack multiple times though, because we have enough energy to do so. Wounded, the man collapses to his knees, breathing hard and begging in a teary voice for you to spare his life. He promises information in exchange. Uh, before you can decide, he reveals that he and many other outlaws were hired by a mysterious man wearing a white mask with the sole purpose of spreading chaos throughout the, the island, all in exchange for gold and treasure. We never really asked any questions because he paid it so well, but be warned, Maho Kenshi, I've seen him accompanied by twisted and nightmarish creatures. Um, they seem honest, but it's hard to believe such a tale could be true. Perhaps you can confirm whether this is true by inquiring what to the nearest village. Okay. I, uh, pretty much figured out the controls. The controls are pretty, uh, you know, intuitive. There's not, not a lot to them. So far, anyway. So we could travel, well, we can't tra- so we- there is a travel, um, deficit when- going to the mountains so we could go there i kind of want to not do we gain we don't gain anything from this bridge so i kind of want to end our turn there and then um that way we'll have some movement or energy to actually do some uh, some damage to this guy defense reduces incoming damage you can gain defense from certain tiles or card effects defense resets at the beginning of each turn Oh, defense. Okay, so that means we have. That's why we only did one damage before. So the 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 defense you gain from your from your tile, um, is is basically a temporary armor. And as soon as it's gone, it's gone for the turn. Um, you can see the current status effect applied on a character below their health bar or in their character sheet. So this is their character sheet. Cowardly bandit who will not hesitate to run for backup when heavily wounded. Well, they're not going to have a chance because we're about to kill them. We gained a bit of gold. Killing enemies earns you gold. Very nice. Um, we got some card rewards over there, so let's... I guess we can't... Oh, I, I see. It's going to cost three energy just to go through these mountains, so why don't we go ahead and dash and that way we can get there quicklier. <laughs> what is this? Normal? Fast? Very fast. Let's try very fast, because I, I, the travel time seems to be pretty slow. Oh, I didn't mean to end my turn. Whoops. Pick a card. Dash one tile, gain three strength. Draw one card, deal eight damage. Gain eight defense, draw one card. Hmm. Okay. I kind of like this deal eight damage, draw one card. Not that I won't take defense. You gotta, you gotta take some defense, right? And we can go and grab this health potion. Will we use it right away? Yes, we will. So, um, potions are not something you can conserve. I guess what you could do is if the, unless the potion is in, uh, you know, a spot where we can't possibly avoid it, like it was in this case, maybe if it's on the map, we can like leave it for a couple turns, you know, in its location so we can come back to it. We'll say the walking, like, animation is kind of slow. As you draw near the village, a man standing by the gates comes up to greet you. Greetings, Maho Kenshi. May the Kami bless your arrival. We are in desperate need of your help. Uh, I will find out what is happening. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip some of the flavor text. Your objective has, has been updated. Locate and search the abandoned village. Humbly accept this ge a gift. Gain base strength, gain gold, or gain energy. I wonder if this is a permanent upgrade. 
The man takes the sword hanging from his hip and presents it to you. The blade gleams in the sun, showing its quality. Um, I kind of wouldn't mind more energy. If that's a permanent upgrade, I'm not sure. You, you recover two energy. I like to, um, oh, okay. So that was, no, we just gained two temporary energy. Well, I don't know, like two base strength seems like a really big upgrade in comparison to two temporary energy. I don't, I'm not sure, uh, honestly what, I, 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 I guess I would like more information on those kind of rewards. This is a landmark, you can interact with them, and there are many throughout the Celestial Islands. This one is a village, you can buy new cards there. Your card will be reset, your deck will be reset at the start of every mission, so adapt it to fit your objective. Okay, so let's buy some cards. I love the artwork in this game. It really is like a step above. Um, draw one card for per adjacent enemy. That's kind of cool. I like this zero cost draw two cards, although it doesn't give us, like, we don't have any extra energy, so drawing this it just gives us more options. It doesn't necessarily give us more things to do. Um, deal 12 damage when enraged, zero of 10, deal 24 damage instead. Enraged, this condition is valid only if you have lost at least 10 health since your previous turn. Okay. So that's a, this is a very risk. I, I actually really appreciate this um, approach to this kind of mechanic. Uh, a mechanic I've seen in far too many games is like do more damage when you're below 40% health or something like that. Uh, if it's in this game, that's fine. Uh, but I, I, I more appreciate this concept, which is like when you're taking a lot of damage, you're dealing a lot more damage, which is um, a lot better than like trying to contrive a situation in which you're like very low health So you're doling out way more damage um, So let's draw one card. I kind of like the zero cost card and this is a discard cost You must pay you must discard other cards to pay this play this one. Okay, so it is a zero cost But we have to discard I still kind of like that. So let's do that and then I like uh, deal eight damage gain three strength so we would want to play something like that first. Um, and I'll keep the rest of my money. So what, water can't be, so we can't travel through water. Um, we could play this now. And we're going to discard something. We could discard one of our basic strikes. So we can draw two more cards. But if we end our turn, do we discard our hand? Yes, we do. So that was a complete waste. That's fine. We do have it again. So let's use it now. This is the, in the hopes that when I travel, I'm going to travel over to this um, character over here that I can use something, use some cards right away. And in fact, we can, um, we'll get this draw one card, deal eight damage. And that did give us our deal eight damage gain three strength. Unfortunately, this three strength, I'm pretty sure, is not going to do anything for us because we're gonna, you know, we're out of energy when we're done. Um, but it's still eight damage, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep that. Oh, they ran away. That's interesting. So if I travel over there, that's gonna be two move, two two energy. So let's do that. I don't want him to call for backup necessarily. We'll just do our eight damage. And they're on the bridge, so they don't have any defensive bonus. And then we'll back up. I don't know if there's any penalty to like taking extra time in this game. Pick a card, dash three tiles. Ooh, we have to discard for this one. Dash one tile when enraged, dash three tiles instead. So um, a lot of dash, or sorry, enrage mechanics. That might be a character specific thing. There are like four different characters. Uh, let, let you know, uh, let me know that like in the beginning of the game. Can move freely over, but not stop on other characters and water tiles. All travel costs are reduced to one. Gain one fly. Hmm. I do like this. I'm, I, I like the zero cost cards, but this is dash three tiles. Let's try this fly. This seems like a cool one. So why don't we go ahead and use that? We're gonna discard, but that's okay because we're not really, we have a lot of attack cards and we're not really going to use them. 
So we gain one fly. I'm not sure, like, can move freely over. What, is, what does fly one mean, really? I'm, I'm just a little confused about that. I'm not, does that mean we, like, our next movement, we fly once? Cleanse all negative status, recover nine health, ephemeral, and it co it's a zero cost. Skill card, destroyed after being played. Oh, okay. Um, I guess, like, if we finish the mission, it might be that we get this card back. Deal 10 damage from planes, reduce the target's defense by 12 first. So, okay, so we have some interesting cards that are benefit from us being on specific tiles. This is also da 10 damage, like, right away. So that's actually, this sounds really good. I do like this 8 defense, though. So let's take that eight defense. It's it's the most probably the most boring choice of those, but I, I you you know in deck building games you got to kind of make you got to balance your 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 stuff a, a little bit. Every card you play goes into your discard pile and is later shuttle, shuffled back in your draw pile when it's empty. You can destroy cards from the, your deck in shrines. This will help you increase your chances of drawing your good cards. Okay, so we're gonna want to go to a shrine. Is there a shrine on this map? It doesn't look like it. Okay. Um, if we go here, it's going to cost two movement, but we don't have any movement left. There goes our wings. This force is going to reduce our travel cost, or sorry, increase our travel cost, probably. Oh no, it has a road, so that probably means less, yeah, less travel cost. Okay, so we're going to want to go there um, and try and dole out some damage. Let's do our eight damage, three strength, because that's going to um, increase the damage of our next attack. And we can play uh, our draw two cards and discard our dash card, since we're not going to need it. If we can get one more attack, then we can finish this guy off. There it is. Nice. Gain a small amount of gold. These are the planes. Oh, we, we, we're out of energy. I, I kind of wonder if there's a way to increase the some of the animation speed. I find I'm finding them a little bit slow. Oh, I guess this is a shrine. So now we can we could destroy some cards. I wonder if there's a cost associated with that. Destruction is 100 per card, and I'm wondering if that increases. Um, every time we do every time we destroy one so if we destroy this does it does the cost increase no it doesn't okay so that's all right um and i do want to destroy a couple of our basic attacks because i'm already sensing that uh new attacks are just going to be a straight up upgrade sometimes um deck building games will kind of uh build up up upon your starting cards um, and then some deck builders, you're just meant to try and replace them as soon as possible. So this, like, for instance, one energy to deal 12 damage seems really good. Discard your hand and gain 10 defense per discarded card. This seems really good, actually. When drawn, gain one energy. When enraged, gain two energy. This is just a great card. Uh, I'm going to take that because that's like a... We benefit right away from, from getting a card like that, I'd, I'd say. Um, let's go ahead and use our dash. Actually, well, can we, can we cancel? Doesn't seem like we can. Okay, well, we're gonna discard. I'm hoping we can cancel. Nope, never mind. I, I, I was committed, unfortunately, to that terrible move because we moved right up to the enemy and they're gonna deal some damage to us right away. Um, reduces damage dealt by one per charge. So we're doing less damage right now. That's not good. Let's see if we can't um, draw a better card. Nope, never mind. So let's discard our dash card. I'm trying to get our increased strength um, attack. So we gain some extra energy uh, from this skill card. See, that? that's why I say like getting this is great, especially in a deck where we're, um, you know, drawing lots of cards they're gonna do some damage and I, I can't kill them right now so I'm, I'm thinking let's gain eight defense and this will also draw us another card 
Still not getting that uh, our, our increased strength card, so we're just gonna dole out some more damage. Um, so this one you are required to use it right away. I was wondering if maybe I could um, use it on our character just to get the fly, but no. Okay, so we're gonna end our turn now. So they he backed up and they switched switched places. That's interesting to me. All right, well we have lots of um, damage this time, so we got our, our our extra strength, and we can just kill this guy right away. Um, unfortunately, we have to discard in order to play this, and so I can't draw the cards and then discard. These guys um, played really well, actually. Th there was no way they were gonna win. Um, you know, this is obviously like the tutorial island, but I, I played pretty poorly, um, to be honest. So let's go and dash over there. We'll discard to do so, why not? We're gonna pick a new card. Recover one health per strength you have. Lose all strength. Oh, that's interesting. That'd be a, wor a worthwhile card to play at the end of our turn. When drawn, gain one energy. I do really like this card, but admittedly, like, when you get it, you get the energy, but you don't really, you can't really do anything with it once you have it. Um, kind of want to get another damage dealing card, since I did get rid of quite a bit of our, uh, of our, of our attacks. Can upgrade your cards and dojos. I'm assuming that this is a dojo. We will want to do that for sure. And I just got some money. Um, since I, this seems to be a great card for us, I'm wondering, yeah, gain five strength. That's just like a straight up great upgrade for us. Um, this one upgrades the effect when enraged, which is actually not as good. This gives us, uh, gives us extra flying ability. Um, draw extra cards, deal extra damage, draw extra cards. Yeah, I'm thinking this extra strength is um, definitely what we want here. And we don't have enough for another one, because that's just going to increase the damage of all of our attacks, basically. Uh, I, this guy, I'm not sure if they're an enemy or not. Yes, they are. <laughs> they're very much an enemy. Okay, I'm going to stop... Well, we actually have quite a bit of energy right now, so we can get away with moving up to them. This is one of those situations where, like, if you have the right cards, you might want to sacrifice a bit of your energy in order to play some of them. We do have the defense, so we can take whatever damage they're going to do to us. Um, and we can do we dole a little bit of damage out, and that worked out really well. I wonder... Like, he moved to... Uh, isn't there a potion on that? I wonder if uh, enemies can pick up potions. So they gave us a curse card or something. Yeah, curse of health. Play this card to destroy it. When drawn, lose two health. Okay, so we do want to get rid of that as soon as possible. I'm going to move up to him, and I'm going to try and draw cards. We're going to... I guess I could have used this dash, but it uses up an energy, so that doesn't really... Would not really have helped us. And that's what we wanted. We want to draw... Um, our energy card so we have more um, more attacks so we deal eight damage and then uh, gain strength and then that's going to make this one do 17 damage kind of ridiculous overkill but that's okay so they didn't yeah they didn't pick up that potion I kind of appreciate that because it would be really annoying if you like you're fighting an enemy and then they go and pick up uh, one of your own consumables, so you lose the consumable, and then they, it also makes the enemy a lot harder to kill. Uh, you search, your search of the abandoned village bears no fruit, but as you are leaving, you glimpse a small childlike silhouette disappearing into the woods. Trusting your instincts, you f silently follow it. Uh, three small creatures. So a little further, you spot a few villagers in the makeshift cave, leaving cage, leaving no doubt you have found the missing villagers if you act quickly you might be able to ambush their captors okay study your surroundings gain defense or rush in gain strength well of course we're gonna rush in oh wow they surrounded us pretty good this uh, would have been a good situation for that like gain draw one card per surrounding enemy we still have um well i, I don't know i think it's because we're in that uh 
Well, it says playing no effect. I'm not sure why we have four strength right now, but I'm not going to question it. I'm hoping if we draw a card, we could potentially um, draw extra energy. Did not happen. However, we can't. We did draw some defense, so we'll definitely try and uh, take on the next attack. Four and six. So, oh, we took six damage. That's no good, but that's fine. Let's uh, discard one of these in the hopes of getting a bit more energy or possibly extra attacks. Here we go, this is what we want. We want our extra strength and we can kill this guy with this attack. So we'll do so and then we'll do 17 and also 10 so we'll kill this, this lad. Oh no, we won't kill him because he had defense, right? That's okay, we um, can gain eight defense and probably take on their, their attack. So they still did some damage to us. They're, they're a little bit tougher than some of the other enemies. Um, okay, and they, oh, and they also have nine defense because of their location, I think. So that's kind of a bummer. It's okay. This is just very much the starting mission, so, you know, it's designed for us to, to win. And I'm okay with that. You know, we're just kind of learning the mechanics. Level two. So I'm not sure if that means like, was that mission kind of like generated? New cards have been added to your collection. When drawn, recover four health. Um, that's kind of nice. We'll deal eight damage increased by seven per fly. Okay, so we have cards that kind of um, build on our fly stacks. Deal seven damage twice when flying, recover eight health. Interesting. So we, we uh, now have cards in our deck that benefit greatly from us flying at the time of either drawing or playing them. Welcome to the realm screen. Send your Maho Kenshi on missions in the missions tab. Additional missions will unlock after you complete story missions. Strengthen your Maho Kenshi in the ways of the Maho Ken tab. So this is interesting. I haven't really seen um, this done in a lot of uh, quotation marks roguelite uh, deck builders. I'm not, I'm actually now questioning whether or not this game is a roguelite, which is kind of great, but it seems to me maybe we can send our dude on uh, just like random missions before doing like story stuff, making this more of a sandbox experience maybe. In this tab you can use crystals of the Mahoken to purchase upgrades that will improve all of your Mahokenshi landmarks or items you find on missions okay interesting so it may be meta progression without having to die which is also kind of cool upgrade your strike card in your starter deck save travel cards grant two additional defense start missions with 50 additional gold um let's do we'll increase our strike cards In this tab, you can review the various challenges for all the missions you've unlocked so far. Every challenge rewards you with Crystals of Mahoken. So this is the one I think maybe that I did already? Cradle of the Shadows. I'm not sure. It says one of one. So I'm a little bit confused. Yeah, it says 50. We gain I think we, we did this one. Yeah, complete the mission. So the next one would be Pit of Despair. Um, I'm a little bit interested in, like, is this, so is this the only, yeah, this is the only other mission we have. Okay, so maybe we can't do, like, random missions, at least not right now. Um, but the way it's phrasing it makes me feel, ma makes Our it seem like maybe we can later. Reach the celestial islands. Pits tainted by corruption serve them as gateway. They must be sealed if the celestial realm is to be saved, and only you have the power to do so. Okay, so now we are, it's at least um, feigning the option of picking a different character, but I'm, uh, I'm assuming because of this is the alpha demo, uh, we don't. But I, interesting to me, like, you know, there's a couple of interesting things that strike me here. First of all, it tells us that our character here is level two. So they stay at level two. It might be that when we get other characters, we can send them on missions and then grind them up a little bit. I say grind, um, in a good way because you know grind can be a lot of fun when you know when it comes to to, to pr progressing certain aspects of your experience how have these vile creatures reached the celestial islands pits okay we read this um 
So this is going to be a little bit more of a maybe a typical experience of Maho Kenji. Is this uh not, not sure? Okay. Let's uh, use a dash that'll save us an energy. Pick a card, deal four damage twice, deal dash two tiles from planes, draw two cards. All right, we could do this. I'm wondering if we're working with a new, are we working with the exact, with the same deck that we were from the last mission? Or is this a completely refreshed deck? I, many questions, many, many questions I have. So here's an event. Offer to avenge them, gain energy, uh, help them and bury their dead, gain gold. I feel like gaining gold is gonna be better than gaining energy. Um, you gain 50 gold. You side quest started, eliminate eight goblins, quest reward, gain f cards and gold. Okay. Side quests are optional and provide powerful rewards, but will take time to complete. The choice is yours to pursue them or not. Sounds good. And that's the end of our turn. Not sure yet, like, it, it feels like the game is kind of, um, making a statement about how long you take to complete the mission, but I'm not yet seeing any kind of benefit to rushing in or, um, you know, trying to complete missions with any kind of haste. This is interesting. Gain 9 defense when discarded, gain 10 defense. And we also have to discard to play this. Um, it's an interesting card. It's a zero cost card also. But it benefits from discarding. That means we could take this and then we can use this as fodder for other discard cards. But I really like this um, deal 8 damage, gain 3 strength because that just kind of upgrades all of our cards. And I'm going to end our turn so that... Oh, this guy's got range. So actually, we wanted to move up to him as quickly as possible. An ominous presence. You must hurry and seal the corrupted pit to stop the cult from unleashing further chaos. Missions in Maho Kenshi are often time limited. Well, there it is. I said it and then it immediately happened. <laughs> okay, well, we want to do as much damage and we, since we're attacking from the hill, we're gaining um, a attack bonus. So we should be able to kill this lad. Despite their defense bonus. So, I mean, I guess this is where we have to make decisions, like, do I want to try and go and get these extra cards over here and fight the goblin for the sake of our side mission? Or do I want to rush towards the, uh, the boss? Um, this is where, this, this, you know, game kind of immediately addresses a problem I've been having with, like, the last 10 to 20 deck builders I've played, which is that I really don't like, um, the same, seeing the same kind of roadmap that I see in every single deck builder that's like, do you want to go here or do you want to go over here and like do this combat or take this? Like, it's always the same kind of screen that gives us decisions. This game is a lot more granular in the decision making and it offers the player a lot more agency when it comes to uh, how we're approaching combats. The combats basically play exactly the same as a, a normal deck builder in that we're just playing cards to make our character attack. The fact that it's a you know taking place on a map as opposed to like a separate combat screen um, doesn't really change much mechanically, but it does mean that um, the game is kind of making like really planting its foot squarely in this like t this is a tactics game, and um, you're gonna you're gonna play things tactically as well as um, try and do proper you know building of your deck. So I, I really appreciate the approach here. I do want to try and complete that uh, mission. This is also, this is a village. We do have enough to buy some cards, so let's consider doing that. And I believe that that little um, thing there, that, that it was an in indication that I have uh, aggroed those characters. I definitely want this energy card again, I like that. Deal eight, eight damage, reduce the target's defense by 15 first. When flying, range three. Oh, cool. So this one gain benefits us when we're flying. So let's try, we'll, we'll take that. We'll see if we can't get some flying things going on. And I guess um, I was mistaken in assuming that the cards that, that were quotation marks rewarded 
to me in the last um, by beating the last mission. Those weren't. It was specific about its phrasing. They weren't being put in my deck. They were being added to my collection. Meaning, I, I have to assume that means that we were. They are available to find in future missions. Um. So, from planes, are we in the planes right now? Uh, yes, we are. So if I use this, then we're going to draw a card, which is nice. We have now aggroed this third character. Um, I'm not going to try and hold back anymore. Deal eight damage when in rage, reduce the target when flying. Well, we're not flying, but that's okay. Uh, reduce the target's defense by 12 first. So we actually benefit from um, attacking wait is this a yeah this is the plane so I'm gonna move to the planes and that'll hopefully improve our damage output in future turns I am gonna turn down that animation speed it is a little bit quick which is the point of course of course I guess by moving from the forest I gave them the opportunity to move on the forest so now they're gonna be gaining for defense every single turn um, debatably uh, worth it. Well, we should be able to kill them, so that's good. And we have a bit of uh, energy left, so why don't we go ahead and move on to that forest so now we prevent that next goblin from, from uh, getting that defense bonus. Surveillance and tracking. Enemies can adopt various behaviors. For example, surveilling enemies will detect you whenever you come close to them and actively track you with it in a certain range. You can check an enemy's behavior in their character sheet. You can also hover over them to... Okay. Interesting. Um, from planes, reduce the target's defense. Well, we're not on the planes, but that doesn't mean that this isn't worth doing. However, do we have something better? Um... Was hoping we could draw some cards, but it doesn't look like we can. We can, however, kill this guy. So we should do that. And we'll do a little bit of damage to this guy. And when I say a little bit of damage, I really mean, like, nothing. Let's, um... Does, how, what does this mountain provide? Plus four defense and plus two attack. So we'll, we'll gain a major attack bonus from going to the mountain. So that is definitely worth doing. There we go. So that's those are the those goblins defeated. Deal seven damage twice when flying. Recover eight health. We need something that gives us flying. Um, I kind of like this heavy armor. One drawn, gain one energy. I like this as well, but we already have one, so I'm gonna take this heavy armor, and it'll be something we can play at the end of our turn because we're already gonna be discarding our hand. Increase our base strength. That sounds like a good idea. We have aggroed this fellow, and now we can't increase our, our our base strength. Shucks. But we can completely demolish this dude, so that's fine. Meditate. Plus two base strength. Okay. Um, wouldn't mind getting some extra gold. That's going to eat up a bit more time, but we're going to have to be okay with that. We can use this dash twice two tiles card. That'll save us a bit of time and it also draw some more cards since we're on the planes. Gain some extra gold. What is this? Acquire talismans. Tal Talismans grant you powerful and unique bonuses. You can obtain them in castles. Level up your Mahokenshi to unlock additional talismans. Nice. Gain two, ten two energy every four turns. Oh, we can only take one of these. Gain 25% more gold when you kill an enemy. Gain two energy when you kill an enemy. This seems like a good one. Because if we're, like, surrounded by enemies, we could um, potentially kill multiple at once. Um, I kind of don't want to aggro this fellow over here yet, and I don't want to fight this guy yet, but he's kind of in the middle of the map, um, so that's going to be a little bit tricky. If only I had, uh, I have that one card that lets me do ranged. 
I haven't uh, been to the dojo yet, so you know what? Let's go to the dojo. So we can upgrade some of our cards. And I'm probably going to predictably upgrade uh, that one strength card. We do have enough to upgrade another card. Can we upgrade this one? 13 defense per discarded card. That one would be nice. Um, we could do this one for the uh, some extra damage and enraged bo enraged bonus. Oh, I see. We're, we're selecting multiple cards. When drawn, gain one energy. When enraged. Hmm. Gain two defense. And it also reduces the cost. I gotta say, the upgrade... Um, value in this game is is quite nice. They they don't really mess around with some of the uh, uh, the upgrade abilities. So let's yeah let's upgrade one of our dash because gaining one defense as well as reducing the cost of that card seems like a really good value. And uh, we don't have enough, but I, I do want to pick up that extra card. Draw two cards from forest, gain one energy. Ooh, nice, actually. Dash three, uh, t dash three tiles, that's for a discard. Dash one tile, one enraged dash, eh. This one doesn't require a discard. I like this one. And there's a lot of forest in our area here, so we are gonna benefit from that quite a lot. Um, we can do that right now, in fact. I'm not sure. I guess this little over here is going to increase our... Ooh, that guy's got a lot of health. I'm not sure if he can't get over to me in time, so I'm going to use this now. Um, wow, that's a lot of defense we just got. So we should be able to take on... Yeah, this is a good thing I did that, too. Um, Alright, so we don't, unfortunately, have uh, any crafty things we can do. Um, the hill would offer us more attack. We get four defense from here, but I think it would be worth dashing to the mountains. So, for that extra attack damage. And it's uh, kind of a shame we don't have any... anything to draw more cards. So this will take two energy, that's, the, the, you know, the, but we're going to gain defense and also free movement from that one card. And uh, we should be able to kill them. There we go, and then we'll go ahead and gain whatever this is. Increase your base draw. Nice. So the missions, um, your missions are fairly short, um, y you know comparatively to a lot of deck builders where you know you, you can sometimes spend like an hour um but the rewards and the progress is a lot more instantaneous and dramatic like your cards upgrade the card upgrades are like huge the you know the 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 rewards available on the map are are pretty big they're in stature so that is going to be um, that's gonna make this game stand apart, I think. Why are we poisoned? The pit is still open at the end of... Oh, we lose if this, the pit is still open at the end of turn 20. So we have five turns to get over there. <laughs> Close the corrupted pit. Okay, so we gotta, we really gotta mosey. Um... We can do this, we'll gain one energy, so it won't cost us anything. I was really hoping for some movement. So, we're just going to have to move. I could very well lose in this mission. We have just aggroed, like, the big, the big bad. So, we're going to go ahead and discard our hand and gain 10 defense. That's 54 defense. We should be able to take anything. I don't know why we're poisoned still. 20 damage. It's a really good thing I used that card. And he's got 30 defense. I, I don't know if that means that, um, like, do they have 30 defense every turn? <laughs> kind of want to just kill this guy right away. Just so I don't have to deal with him. And we did just complete our side quest. 
Oh, no, we didn't. We, we have one more goblin to kill. So let's see. I'm going to do a little bit of damage to him. And see if uh, that, uh, you know, he gets that defense back. I'm going to do a dash here. And then I'm going to dash away so that we draw an extra card. We did just aggro these guys, so probably a bad play. And we're about to take a lot of damage from this guy. He probably has the movement to get over and hit us. Uh, ooh, yep. And he also gets that, that defense back. But we should have our enrage for once. So let's see if we can't do some, some actual damage to him. 10 damage. 15 damage now. Reduce the target's defense by 15. By Okay, so yeah, that should actually hurt him. Um, when enraged, gain two energy. So we'll do that. And we're in the forest, so we should actually be able to draw um, energy and cards from this. We could actually do some really nice damage to them or gain some defense back. But I think we honestly have the, the health to... Mm, not sure. Uh, I feel like dashing away might be a good play. Reason being is that this goblin could actually get in this guy's way. We're going to gain nothing from this, but I played it anyway. I knew that that guy was going to do some damage to us. Ah, that's a shame. He was able to, to move over to us and, and do some pretty hefty damage. But that's going to give us our enrage. Uh, if I can actually make that happen. Which it looks like I can't. I, I don't have any draw right now. Kind of tempted to try and get over to some planes just so I can get some card draw. I'm like aggroing everything on the map, which is like really unideal. <laughs> but I did manage to get our uh, get some extra energy. I'm going to go ahead and play this for some more energy and see if I can't kill some stuff. From planes, reduce the targets. Okay, so this is this will kill this guy dead. You slay the final goblin as requested by the merchants of the caravan you encountered. You gain one piercing thrust card, one purging vial card, one fresh horse card, and 200 gold. That's quite, quite great. Destroyed after being played. This is destroy... Wow, okay. Seal it to stop enemies from spawning. So I'm wondering if we could, like try and rush them without having killed this guy cleanse all negative status recover nine health that is definitely going to come in handy we have six um energy right now let's see if we can't kill this guy we are in plane so we will reduce their defense they don't have any defense but i think we should be able to kill them it'll use up almost all of our energy, but that's fine. And I'm gonna try and dash over here. <laughs> Seal the pit! We can do it! <laughs> rush in! Zerg rush them! Yo! <laughs> I actually love that we can, we can completely ignore all of the enemies and just like run straight for it. We didn't- we missed our quest um, to defeat the Armored Oni. So we don't get as many crystals, but we could like probably replay the mission to uh, to to try uh, to do that, and we'll have more cards in our collection next time. I'm assuming because we've leveled up, gain one strength when you play a move card. So these are talismans that will be possibly available to us um, the next time we we do a mission. So yeah, um, I really like this game. <laughs> It, uh, it, you know, it's, it's playing on meta progression in an actually really novel and interesting way and in a way that rewards player victory as opposed to vi player defeat. Uh, I don't feel like I have to, you know, beat my face against a, a kind of a grind wall of like playing as far as I can and then dying in order to get some rewards that remain consistent. And in fact, I can go back and replay old missions 
to to try and get a better score maybe with new cards i have to assume that's how it works we got a new character as well so maybe we could try the new character on the same mission and now we have i think just like not available in mission okay but this is a side mission so this confirms what i was saying before is that there will be side missions that you can kind of you know play for a little bit of extra grind um, before you do like main story missions. Uh, I'm gonna leave it here, but I think we've gotten a really good taste of everything that the, this has to offer. And this uh, this game is 100% meeting any of my expectations. I was really looking forward to this game, and um, I, I feel like this is this is gonna be a really really cool game. It's like one of those um, unexpected hits that uh, that you, you know you don't you don't realize it's coming and then it's out and then it's it's like excellent and I, I definitely think that when this game comes out it will probably make my main rotation of like deck builders and I, I'm speaking from you know as someone who is also a little bit burnt out on deck builders I think that this game is doing a lot to shake up the format and um, kind of uh, marrying this with almost like a sandbox RPG which I, I really really like to see um, and it's, it's really nice to see a game kind of like attempt the deck builder format without necessarily a roguelite, roguelite or roguelite, uh, right, sorry, roguelike approach. Um, because I, personally, I'm kind of, I'm kind of also burnt out by roguelites. So um, I really, I, I love to see the kind of almost linear RPG format uh, approach. I think that that is, is really, really refresh, refreshing, and uh, I'm looking forward to trying more of this. I honestly kind of wanted to just like play some more of the demo in my off time. Uh, I know that the other characters have a very different way of uh, progressing, and they, it looks like they have a, like, a lot of, you know, they have just as much progress as the main character. So uh, not only is there s some novel stuff in just like the main game, but there's like a lot of replayability as well. Um, there's a lot of stuff in this game. I'm really, I'm really excited to play more of it. Anyway, uh, this was Maho Kenshi, and I am super impressed, if you can't tell, by it. Um, I'm very excited by it, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.